So, um, we will be discussing Chapter 3, Important Chemical Concept and Basic Approach to Chemical Equilibrium. So, this is a combination of your knowledge from your inorganic and organic chemistry, which is stoichiometry, to our next topic, which is chemical equilibrium. So, before we dwell into a very complicated solving uh, or problem solving, we'll be first have a review and an introduction to your um, stoichiometry, mole, millimole concept that you have already encountered before. So, um, important unit of measurement, we have SI unit. SI unit is an acronym for your system international unites, and it has a base it has a basic seven fundamental unit. Uh, beside the given table that I will, I will be projecting later, angstrom is not an SI unit, but it is commonly used as a company, a, a unit for wavelength in other, other branches of sciences. So one angstrom basic computation is equivalent to one nanometer, and it, all, it is also equivalent to one times 10 raised to three meter. So here is a table for the SI base unit. Most of this will not be used in, in your analytical chem, but in other branches of science. So we will be more in, uh, encountering um, kilogram and mole. So this is an example of a prefix for unit. We have giga, mega, kilo, deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, pico, pento, and alto. So we will not be using this also, but in your professional subjects such as hematology and um, parasitology, we'll be seeing a lot of nano, pico, micro, and femto on it because it's the size of the cells and the paras parasites that you'll be encountering as well as the bacteria. So what is a mole? So always remember that a mole is an SI unit amount for a chemical species. So that means one mole of any type of element is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 atoms or atomic mass unit. So this 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 is what you call Avogadro's number. So you have to remember this conversion because you'll encounter this a lot later on. So uh, one mole of uh, one mole is equivalent to this type or this lot of atoms. So imagine one dozen of egg being the mole is equivalent to twelve pieces of egg being the six point zero twenty two times ten is so twenty three. So um, mole is created for you to not have a difficulty in um, saying or writing 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 atoms. So it's a collective, collective term for this lot of amount of atoms. So uh, one mole is equivalent to different weight depending on what element we are talking. So a mole of sulfur, say for example, um, you have to download this um, periodic table or you have to always have a periodic table with you. Also, this calculator help. This calculator is the Calc ES, so you may want to download that for an ease in computation. So, back to our sulfur. The sulfur atomic weight is equivalent to 32.065 gram per mole. Meaning, for this 6.022 times 10 raised to 23, atoms, the weight of all those atoms is 32.065 gram per mole. And that is equivalent or collectively known as one mole of your sulfur. So that is connection between the mole grams and the molecular weight. So gi given given these three types of um, numbers, you already have or you can already have compute three different or you can already derive three different types of formula with it. So the first one is molar mass. If you are already familiar with molar mass, it has the same formula with molecular weight and sometimes interchangeably called molecular weight. And it also have the same formula with your formula weight. So um, when we say molar mass, it usually pertains to both molecular weight and atomic weight. When we say molecular weight, we have a molecule and we solve for its weight. When we say atomic weight, we only have one atom, say sulfur, and we solve 
we don't need to solve for it because it is already on your periodic table. It is already given it. It is already um, solved. Another problems you they, there are already they are they are already giving uh, a solve type of molecular root. So you don't need to solve it anymore. You just have to copy it. But we have to learn how to compute for your molecular weight. Say, for example, on your glucose. On your glucose, we have C6H12O6 as a formula. So the first thing we have to do is to list down all the atoms found in this molecule, which is carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. The next step is we have to list down how many of these atoms are present in that element. So for your carbon, we have 6. For hydrogen, we have 12. And for oxygen, we have 6. The next step for this one is to look for the molecular weight of this atom on your periodic table. So say, for example, in our carbon, the molecular weight is 12. So I'll round it all up since this is just an example. But if you're going to compute, say, for example, in our given quiz, please include up to four decimal points, such as the one here given in your periodic table. So carbon has 12 or 12.0107 gram per mole. So... I want you to focus on the unit given for every solving problem solving that we are going to compute. Because on that unit, you can already derive a formula and a clue on how to solve that problem. So hydrogen is 1. But to be exact, hydrogen is 1.00784. So I'll just put 1 here for the ease of our computation. For oxygen, we have... For oxygen, we have 16 or 15.9994 gram per mole. It will be 16 gram per mole. So if we are going to compute it, you have to look and find for the sum. So 6 times 12, that will be 72. Then 1, and then 12, sorry. And then we have um, 6 times 16 is 96. So the total sum for this is... 96 plus 12 plus 72 is 1, 180 gram per mole. So again, the unit will retain because there is no cancellation or division found in this formula. The answer for the molecular weight or the molar mass of, of glucose is 180 gram per mole. So I have here formaldehyde and potassium permanganate for you to solve um, at home as, as a practice uh, problem. Next is, what is the difference between the mass and weight? The difference between them is simple. Uh, it's, it's the position or the gravitational pull of the Earth. So if you are going to remember, the formula for Newton's second law is force is equivalent to mass times acceleration. So I have a technique for you to compute for the mass which is force over acceleration. Of course, if you already know how to manipulate this type of problems, there will be no need for you to look in this type of technique. But this technique can be applied in different type of computation too. You have to draw a triangle, and then you have to include the formula in this type of um, in this type of arrangement. So if you're going to look for force, the formula would be mass times acceleration. If we're going to look for mass, that will be force over acceleration. And if we are going to look for acceleration, that would be force over mass. So you can you can you can um, change this each of them into another type of um, formula that you have. You can exchange them. But again, if you are already an expert in manipulating this type of equation, say for example, you just have to multiply this. So the ones that will be remaining is your force on the other side. Or if you if you wanted to have the long method, that will be mass. Um, sorry, that will be mass over one. So you just have to cross multiply, or you have to multiply both side by multiply both side by um, acceleration. This is how you do it in a long but in a long in a long method so that will be four times a over a is equivalent to mass times a over one so that will be cancel the a over a that will be force is equivalent to m a just m a so that is the long type of method but if you are going to have a shortcut technique this one would do so 
Though we have discussed on how to compute for this, we will not be using this in analytical chemistry. Instead, we will be using um, uh, mole mass, the molar mass, which is gram per mole. And we have also the Avogadro's number, which is 6.0 through uh, 22 times 10 raised to 23 AMU. So this should be Avogadro's number. Okay, so we'll not be using more of mass and uh, and weight and its differences. So the next one would be the millimole. The next one would be the millimole. So one millimole is equivalent to 10 raised to 3 mole. So keep a hang on that formula because we'll be using that in our future computation. Also, one mole is equivalent to 1,000 millimole. So it's the reverse type of conversion of this one. So next, we have a practice formula here. Okay, so when we encounter this type of formula, you have to list down first what you, what you need and what is given on that formula. So we have grams, we have mole, we have molar mass, we have Avogadro's. What is given already is Avogadro's. We know that that is 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 atoms. And for the molar mass, it can also already be computed since it is present in your periodic table. But in this case, the molar mass of your benzoic acid is already given, which is 122.1 gram per one mole. So we are searching for the number of moles and millimoles. Um, in my case, I am more comfortable in solving for the mole first and then converting it to millimoles. Some people are more comfortable using millimoles or they prefer using millimoles and then converting it to mole. Now, um, I'm going to compute for the mole first, but um, I'm, go I'm going I'm to write what is given. So we already have written 122.1 gram per mole and we also have 2.00 gram so we are looking for the number of mole. So always remember that um, uh, before you do anything, before you compute for anything, you have to write the given first, just like your elementary math. So um, um, in computing, we have to write 2.00 gram. This one is for your acid times, okay, the other given here, that we can use. Again, I want you to focus on the unit given. So the unit given here is gram per mole and your grams. You already gr have grams. So having grams and gram per mole, you can solve mole from there. So let's um, let's compute. Uh, the gram here is uh, 2.00 gram and then we have one point, sorry, 122 Point 0.1 gram for every one mole. Now I add gram at the denominator for us to cancel gram and the mole will remain. So for this one, we're going to cancel both grams and then we're going to divide. So that will be 2 divided by 122.1. I'm sorry. 2 divided by 122.1 is equivalent to 0 0.01638. Now, in your computation, I want you to round off all your answer in your quizzes into four decimal point only. So, we'll have the uniformity in your answer. So, um, the unit for this one is mole. Now that we already have mole, remember that I told you that one mole is equivalent to 1,000 millimole. Given this formula and this given conversion, We'll use 0 0.0164 mole times, we're going to divide for every one mole, there is a 1,000 millimole in it. So, that will be 0 0.0164 times 1,000. So, the answer for this one is 16.4 millimole. You have to cancel mole, so the remaining unit is millimole. So the answer for that is 16.4 millimole of your benzoic acid is present in 2.0 gram of your pure acid.
So that's how you compute for this one. Okay. Our next problem involves a little bit of your equilibrium. So again, if you wanted to solve this on your own, you can pause this video. But if you wanted to solve it with me, um, you can stay as is. So determine the mass in grams of your sodium and 25 grams of sodium sulfate. So first you have to write the balance equation of the given formula since it was asking for the amount of sodium that can be found in sodium sulfate. So sodium sulfate will have sodium plus sulfate on the other side of the equation, but we have to balance that equation by adding 2 on your sodium. Therefore, we have 2 sodium on both sides and 1 mole of sulfur on both sides too. So, after writing the balance equation, you have we have to write the given of the problem. So, the given in sodium is um, the molar mass, the molecular weight or molar mass is equivalent to 2 22.99 gram per mole. Again, the molar mass and atomic mass is already given in this problem, so you don't have to solve for it or look for it in the periodic table. So the question is, what is the grams or the mass in grams of your sodium? So we are going to look for the grams of sodium. Another given is sodium sulfate. So, the molecular weight of sodium sulfate is already computed as 142 gram per mole. And the mass or in, the mass in gram is already given to which is 25 grams. Now, since we cannot compute for anything in your sodium, since we, all, we don't have a data for your grams, we have to compute for your sodium sulfate. Anyway, we already established a correlation and connection between sodium sulfate and sulfur. Now, when we say correlation, we have to write the ratio for each molecules in that equilibrium. So, for every one mole of your sodium sulfate, we have two mole of your sodium and one mole of your sulfate. So the connection between sodium sulfate and sodium is 1 is to 2. So we're going to use that ratio later. First, we, all, we, we must solve what we can solve on your sodium sulfate. Having a gram on molecular weight and a given gram in mass, we can solve for the mole of your sodium sulfate. Now we solve for mole by first starting with or by starting with grams, 25 grams times we have to put grams at the denominator so we can cancel it. That will be 142 grams for every 1 mole. So we will get, we'll cancel both the grams and we'll get a mole. So that will be 25 divided by 142 with a total of 10.176. Again, I'm going to use 4 decimal point for this computation. That will be 1761. The unit will be mole the remaining mole now that we already have a mole for this sodium sulfate which is 0 0.1761 mole we can use that to solve for the sodium mole why do we have to look for sodium because we are looking for grams and to eliminate your mole in this molecular weight we have to have a value for the mole for the mole so we establish that by computing or by using this ratio 1 is to 2. This one is for your sodium 2 or your sodium sulfate. Now, we have 0 0.1761 sodium sulfate, mole of sodium sulfate, multiplied by, for every 1 mole, sorry, for every 1 mole, of sodium sulfate why do i have to write it here because we can so we so that we can cancel mole of sodium sulfate and then we have in ratio two mole of sodium for every one mole for every one mole of sodium sulfate we have two moles of your sodium so we have established the ratio for this um computation of moles so we have to cancel Cancel so that the remaining value would be 2 mole of your sodium. So if we are going to compute for this one, we have to multiply it by 2. So the total uh, amount will be 0 
mole of sodium. Now that we already have or established the mole of sodium, we have the mole already, which is, sorry, 0 0.3521, 0 0.3521 mole. We have mole, we have mole. We can now compute for the missing gram. So for this one, we have to compute 0 0.3521 0 mole of sodium times 22 gram, it's probably 22.99 gram per mole for, I sorry, gram for one mole. Oh, it, it should be reversed now. The mole should be in the denominator because we wanted to cancel the mole. Sorry. For every one mole of sodium, there is a 22.99 grams of sodium. So if we are going to compute for that, we have to multiply 0 0.35 to 1 mole to 22.99. And we have to cancel the mole of sodium so that the gram of sodium will just, just be the factor that will remain. So 0 0.35 to 1 times 22.99, the answer would be 8.0951 grams of your sodium. So there is a... There is a 8.0951 grams of sodium for every, for every, um, 25 grams of sodium sulfate. So if you are going to, uh, look for sulfate, you just have to subtract 25 grams from 8.0951 grams of sodium. So that is the mole of sulfate, uh, that is the gram of sulfate that have, that's, that have been used in um, creating sodium sulfate in this solution okay next okay so solutions and their um concentrations okay so the molar concentration of a solution of a chemical species x is the number of the moles of the solute species that is contained in one liter of solution so we are arriving in the molar concentration or molarity um, computation. So, for mol molarity, for molarity computation, the formula is molarity indicated by letter M, big letter M, is equivalent to the number of mole over the number of solution. Okay, so if you are going to look for the number of mole, we can further expand this to mole is equivalent to gram over molecular weight. And gra molecular weight is gram per mole. So if we are going to create that in an equation, why mole? Because we have cancelled the gram in this equation, so that mole will be the only ones remaining. That is why we can use Instead of number of mole, if it's not given, we can write it as gram over molecular, molecular weight. So it's the same. This is the formula for mole, the number of mole. Oh, next. Okay, so for this equation, calculate the molar concentration of ethanol in aqueous solution that contains 2.30 grams of ethanol in 3.50 milliliter of solution so please take note of um equations such as this one that uses milliliter so be careful in your conversion so for me it's easier and more conventional to compute everything without the prefixes that's why i always use gram mole without the milli and the uh in 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 volume i always use liter and it it, it is the um, unit all that is also used in molarity formula later. So 3.50, let's convert that into liter first. So that will be 3.50 ml times for every one liter, there is 1000 ml. That will be for every one liter, so we can cancel the ml. I'm gonna put ml at the bottom or at the denominator, which is 1000 ml. So that will be canceled, that will cancel the milliliter unit. 
and the liter will only remain. So that will be 3.50 times, or sorry, divide 1,000. That will be 0 0.0035 liter. So let's list down all the givens in this problem. So now that we have converted the liter, I'll start with that. 0 0.0035 liter. We also have 2.30 grams of ethanol. I'm not going to put ethanol anymore to avoid being redundant. We are, we, we are just talking about one solution here, aqueous solution. And then the, mol the molar weight, the molecular weight, sorry, the molecular weight is already given, which is 46.07 gram per mole. Now, as I've said, in case that the number of mole is not given, you have to solve for it as gram over molecular weight. Okay, so um, the formula for molarity would be 2.30 grams divided by 46.07 gram per mole divided by your 0 0.0035 liter. So I it's, it's fine with me if you write it like this, but if you're going to write it formally, that will be 2.30 grams over 46.07 gram per mole um, times 1 over 0 0.0035 liters. That will be 2.30 grams over, um, I have to compute for this one. That will be 46.07 times 0 0.0035. That will be one, sorry, 0 0.1612 gram per mole over per liter. So, so in this case, it will be a little bit more complicated. So you have to compute for this one. But if you're going to compute it this way, it's fine with me. Since you'll just arrive with the same question. Do note that the, the unit for molarity can be M, a big letter M, or it can also be mole over liter. So you'll, you're, you, 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 you're going to see in this formula that I've written that we can cancel the gram so that mole per little liter will just remain. So for this one, I compute it this way. 2.30 divided by 46.07 and then total it. And then I'm just going to divide it again by 0 0.0035. So the answer for this one is 15.6013 mole, or you can write it at, at write it at 15.6013 mole over liter. Okay, so that is the molarity of your ethanol. Okay, next. Um, we have analytical molarity, in which case this is what the molarity formula that we are using, the usual molarity formula. I also have your equilibrium molarity, in which case we are going to um, combine the equilibrium um, in with the molarity that we already know of. So the equilibrium molar concentration are usually symbolized by placing square brackets around the chemical formula for the species. So if you see a square bracket every time in this analytical chem, that means it is a molarity that can be found in the equilibrium um, formula. So and we're going to compute for this one in the chemical equilibrium. So I guess I'm going to skip this one. So next, next one is expressing the solution concentration. So percent concentration, chemists frequently express concentration in terms of percent. So there are three common methods that can be used. We have weight by uh, weight, weight uh, volume by volume, and weight by volume, in which case this weight by volume is the one that you are seeing in, um, in your alcoholic drinks and other type of drinks. So um, you might have seen weight by volume or volume by volume. So the computation for that is quite simple and you just have to memorize the formula. Weight over solute over weight of the solution, in which case weight of the solution is equivalent to um, solute plus solvent. Um, the same goes for the other two. Then you have to multiply that by 
100% because we are computing for the percent concentration. Okay, so we also have parts per million and parts per billion. So it is connotated by CPPM, mass of solute over mass of solution times 10 raised to 6 ppm. We also have your PPB or parts per billion. So I'm going to skip this one too. We also have your p-function test. So yeah, you may have encountered this and doesn't realize that you have already encountered this p-function. So p-function, the most common one we know is pH. And p-function test, it's not just pH. If you are going to uh, study in your professional subjects, just clinical chemistry, you'll be encountering PO2 and PCO2 which is also a p-function test. So scientists frequently express concentration of species in terms of its p-function or p-value. The p-value is the negative base of negative 10 logarithm of the molar concentration of the species. So take note of this very important formula too. Px, say for example, we have pH. X, uh, it is connotated by X because it can be... Um, it can be replaced with other elements such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, other molecules that you wanted to compute. So in this case, we mostly encountered pH. In computing and solving and in checking water that we drink, we use pH a lot. In the shampoos that we use, everything that we use involves pH in it. And um, the formula for this one is pH is equal to negative logarithm of your X. So what is X? In this case, it is H. So again, we have encountered this rectangular bracket, which means this is a molarity of your hydrogen. So we can we have also encountered pH, sorry, pOH, or the p function of your hydroxide, which is negative logarithm of hydroxide. Okay, so um, we also know we also established the fact that. Um, in a pH scale, there are seven acidic and seven um, basic part of, uh, of a pH scale. So the pH 1 is the acidic, acidic part. That will be 1 to 7. And the pOH is the 7 to 14 basic um, scaling. So the most known P function again is um, H3O or yung um, H, H and H3O are the same. They are interchangeably used as a hydrogen. Um, H is hydrogen and H3O is hydronium, but they can be used interchangeably. Okay, so the density is the mass of the substance. Far away. Um, this, this, this formula can be reversed. I might have just discussed this one too. So if you're going to look for the pH, uh, if you are going to look for the molarity of the pH, molarity of hydrogen with a given pH, with the pH already given, the formula for that is, okay, so the formula for this one is 10 raised to negative pH or the antelog of your hydro, hydronium or hydrogen molarity. So do not forget of this formula. Moving on to our density and specific gravity. Density is the mass of the substance per unit volume in as a unit. Density is expressed in units of kilogram per liter or can be alternatively gram per milliliter. So specific gravity is the ratio of the mass of the substance to the mass of an equal volume of water at 4 degrees Celsius. So all guys for our chapter 3. So I'm going to send you the copy of your chapter 4 too. And please do read your book, Skug, as a reference on this discussion. Kindly please solve the following problems um, on Skug so you can have uh, a practice problem to practice your skills that you've learned in this presentation. Thank you.